Frank and John de Linsec's roots run deep in Aspen. They were born and raised on Monarch Street in a house that is still their home today. From their window, the brothers watched and watched over Aspen's transition from mining to skiing. You're actually sitting in 1888 construction. This part of the house is the old original house. And the bedroom in back of me is where I was born. We skied out here in our yard. And then we got into making our own skis after we saw how apparel was made. So we'd work a couple of weeks <laughs> building a pair of skis just to go out for one good run and break them. <laughs> now this is some slides showing what Monarch Street looked like in 1948 after a snowstorm. We had a shovel clear down to Cooper Avenue by hand. Now this was taken probably in the, uh, after the lift was built, in quiet years. You didn't have much time to talk, you just had time to shovel. I mean, they, they, they were jack of all trades. Uh, any any time anybody needed any help with regard to everything from welding to carpentry to uh, helping shovel snow, uh, they were always around. They were always available. You could always count on them. As could the armed forces in World War II, Frank earned a bronze star and cluster with the 10th Mountain Division, and John patrolled the Pacific with the Navy. After the war, their father's confidence in skiing as Aspen's future prosperity convinced the boys to stay rooted and home. In the picture down in one corner there, the skis, there's me. That was in the spring of 1946. That's when, the, that's when they shut the boat tow down and we start building the uh, Number one. Well, Frank Willoughby, he came, uh, I was uh, helping Aldo Kluschmeyer on the uh, boat tow. And they were about ready to shut down, so he came over and he says, asked me if I wouldn't go with him and survey out for number one lift. It was a walk up in the mornings and ski down at night. And we had to shovel out the pits her down to dirt, cut all the brush out of the way so that he could see, you know, for his line. But we done it all in one month. We surveyed the whole thing from the bottom of the hill here to midway in one month. See, when they, the guys were digging the building reforms, we were waiting on steel. So when they were waiting on steel, most of us guys went uh, to work with uh, cutting ski trails. And that was all by axe. Well, I think they started on well, number one, we started what was in June, we started probably digging the first holes. And it was running, finished in uh, December. Oh, yeah. 15th of December was complete, and number two was complete. I came <clears throat> just after they built the number one and the number two, and uh, they were on the crew then, and uh, their job was to ski the lift line, and they were a damn good skier, uh, especially right around the course school. And when I started with the, uh, in the winter, I worked at, uh, on the ski patrol, it was one of the originals of the Ski Patrol with Donnie Elisha, Pete Seibert, and I forget the rest of them. And then I went to maintenance and stood up the bunkhouse. I stood up there all one winter with John. We'd come down once a week and take a bath. Well, when, when we first came here, my wife and I ran the sun deck and the Delinchig boys were part of the lift crew that used to live up in a small building that uh, would eventually be covered by snow and they would have to get down uh, like going into a mine opening. 
and they would ski down and get the lifts uh, one and, and two started every day. Well, if you notice these poles going right down along here down to the uh, original s ski lodge, if we didn't call the powerhouse so that they could throw on another generator, we would knock out for the city of Aspen power supply. <laughs> Frank and John were always, especially Frank, was working on the lift here, especially there was always something wrong with lift number 10, tower 10 up here, and he was always climbing up there because it had a, a hole down, you know, when the cable goes underneath it and it would often uh, jump or whatever it is. Frank was always there to see if everything was in good shape. Very, very good mechanics. In charge, they did a fantastic job. Really, you had to dig the hole, set the pipe, or we call the pylon, at the angle of, and their theory was to put everything exactly 90 degrees to the slope of the hill. And when they got that done, then they would hoist the crowns up on them and Frank would climb up and weld them crowns on. Oh yeah, no, that's, as I say, deep thinkers. They were thinking about the mechanics of the job they were doing, mechanics of skiing. And uh, they were tinkerers. And uh, that's what thinkers are. And tinkering could be fun. In the early 50s, fellow Sundecker Jack Ilgen bet a case of beer that John couldn't get TV reception from Denver. Well, I didn't think it could, know whether it could or not, but just for darn honoring this, I took him up on it. Anyway, I called Frank up and told him to bring the Sears Roadbug catalog up and ordered the TV set from him, with the smallest one they had. And if you look from the sun deck at the uh, collegiates, you'll see a great big notch in the, the mountain, just like somebody sawtooth. Well, we named the TV antenna right at that notch, and we got channel two, just as good as uh, your cable. And so old Jack owed me a case of beer, Coors. And through their efforts, it was possible for the city and part of the county to have one channel, uh, KREX in Grand Junction. And uh, I had put lodging in, and they, wired my building and put an aerial on the top of the building which I still have and uh, we were able to have uh, television in the rooms. If, if we keep remembering that Aspen needed people who had vision and had imagination and loved the sport and it's those are the people that we want to honor and have on, on our honor roll. Since leaving the Ski Corps, Frank worked as a welder mechanic for the city of Aspen, and John lent his talents to the Postal Service until their recent retirements. Postmaster George Ware, along with his wife Ardith, nominated the Delincic brothers with these words. Aspen is a tapestry made up of the colors of the seasons, weaving those with the mountains, time, the people. It is so important to interlace the abilities of those who dedicate an entire lifetime to their home and hometown. So it is a privilege to nominate two of Aspen's best, deserving to be in that magic tapestry that captures and holds us all. <laughs>